Hello, welcome back. We're going to take a hard look at sorting. First, let's take a look at the video. Here we have a flower list, and so we give it the identifier flower list. And we're going to use dot sort, the internal sorting method of any list. And we see that right there in memory, it sorts up the flowers. Notice that we've lost the old order, they are gone, and that sort returns a none. Now let's have a look at our list to start again, identified as flower list, and this time we're calling sorted, the built-in function that works on any iterator. And what it does is it makes a new copy sorts up that new copy and what it returns is the new copy. So we have the data in memory two times. One for the new copy and once for the old copy. Okay, now that you have that sorting in your mind, and you remember there is the list dot sort, and there is the built-in function sorted, and the list dot sort, if you have a list, then inside that list you have these flowers, but also inside that list you have the list dot sort. It's inside the list, therefore it goes inside the list and sorts them up. There we have our flowers sorted up. Because it just changed memory, it has nothing new to return. Therefore, it returns you none. So here we see our flower list sorted, and there it is. And remembering sorted, which is not a list method, but a built-in function of Python itself and can work on any iterable and lists certainly are an iterable. We want to notice here that we could say reverse equals true and we'll get the reverse sort order, but there is also a key. We can provide a key function so that we can take control of the sort order. We'll see that in a few minutes. But what you want to remember about sorted is it comes from outside, from Python itself. And so when I do sorted on flower list, it copies it out into a new list. And that new list is sorted, so it returns the new list, and it leaves the old list alone. Those two ways of sorting you want to keep them real straight in your mind. One makes a new copy and leaves the old sort order alone, and the other sorts in place, which then throws away the old sort order. But when you make a copy and sort it, if you have a lot of data, you're taking up a lot of memory. So you want to do what is most appropriate in your situation. that that iterable is sorted, it also has reverse and key. We are now going to study the key. Let's look at our keysort.py. We'll start down here at main, where we have some names in a list. And I print them, and there they are. If I use sorted on them, now remember that's the built-in function, it's leaving names alone, and it's returning a sorted version, and there we see it. Now we're going to use the key. We're going to do sorted of the names. Our key is the built-in function len. The key must be a function. And what will happen is that each of the elements of this iterable will be passed into len and then the sorting will go on by the return of that function. If you come from database, you might call it a sort key. But what happens then when I look at the result is 
They are sorted by length, but I don't see the length. This is something that happens underneath where we're not. It's called the decorate, sort, undecorate algorithm that is taking place in compiled C that we don't have anything to do with, and it's very fast. So you really like that key option for taking control of your sorting. Now then, you can have that function be anything you want it to be. I have created a function, magic number. We'll look at what that is in a few minutes, but let's see what happens. We're going to report internal sort key. So what we really want to do is just do names.sort like that. But to give you an idea, I did another function, report internal sort key, so you can see that decorate sort undecorate algorithm that goes on in the interpreter. I'm doing it here in Python, very slow. Here come in my names. Now, I'm going to make a new list of sort keys. Here I am decorating. For each of the names, I'm, at, I'm going to run that name through magic number and whatever comes back. That's the first element of my tuple, and the second one is the name that came in. So I have a list of tuples. And when they are sorted then, they are sorted first by the first item. If the first item is the same as another one, then they are sorted by the second item. That's what that means. And here's what we have then. Here's our tuple. I haven't sorted them. 46 is what was returned by the magic number, 71. So these are these tuples will be sorted. And then, because 8 is the smallest number, I come out first. And then, and. Well, okay. You can make any key you want, and that's going to be real useful, especially when we're an object oriented and we can then sort by any attribute of our own objects. Okay, let's take a look at magic number, just out of curiosity, and also because it has some nice string processing in it. Here comes in that string, that name. There's an alphabet. Okay, so you realize at index 0, we have the A, and at 1, the B. I'm going to make a total. I'm taking each character that's in the string, but I'm looking at the lowercase version because the lowercase version of each of those characters is what is in there. And so I'm going to take that alphabet dot index, and if I have an A going in, it'll give me a 0. And I'm adding that number, whatever it is, its place in the alphabet, into the total and returning that total. Just a nonsense algorithm. But I'll tell you that when I grew up in rural New Mexico, we would use this algorithm. The girls would use this algorithm and calculate our magic number and the magic number of all the boys in the class because we were sure to marry the one with the same magic number. Okay, that's it for this lab. Have a go with the exercises. I'll see you when you're done.